Hi, welcome back to another Archicad Speed modeling tutorial by ASM TechBase. My name is Carsten Endy. Join the ASM TechBase email list for newsletters and future updates. Hi and welcome to the first Archicad Speed modeling tutorial in 2021. In this tutorial we're looking at the 520 West 28th Street by Zaha Hadid, the famous architect. I came across this last year and thought this would be a great tutorial because there are some details in there that are actually quite challenging in ARCHICAD. Let me start with the first one. I've got some reference images here, put it into a worksheet. We can see that's what we do today. So let me move to the left first and zoom in. So the first challenge ARCHICAD has is really connecting this um, connecting this detail here. You see how it's connected nicely and round going up here. So I think that's the first challenge I like to look at. We can create this profile fairly easy, but like I said, getting into this, that's a bit more challenging. All right, so let me go back to my drawing. I have created sort of a bit of a head start. And what I do is now, I will create this profile for you. As you can see, I've got one here. So this is fairly simple, the first step. We go to the Profile Manager and we create a profile. I created this profile already here. Let me edit this. And I didn't have any plans, so I just roughly looked at my uh, reference photo. You know, I zoomed in and tried to copy this um, profile. So if I go back to the profile now, go here, that looks fairly nice and what is good if you use the profiler you can actually see here around the edges very nicely so it will render nice and it looks quite cool in 3d okay so that's the first step i did make sure you save it as a wall or a beam and then we just get out of here maybe one thing before we go make sure also you select this and i always use the override surface option here so this one here I used the blades. Okay, so let's just save this and I'm getting out of here. Now, great. On my drawing uh, on the floor plan, to draw this now, it's very simple. Because I used a wall or a beam, I can use any of them. So let me have a look. If I click on the one that already drawn, I did use a beam. So let's get back into here, beam. And all I do is I go to segment and we choose from here, that's the default. We go to the um, this setting here, which will choose a profile. And I like to choose I Sahid one. I put an A in front because of the tutorial, because with Z, I will be all the way at the bottom. Okay, so let's choose this one first. Um, override surfaces, I usually use those ones here. Blades, and I put it on beam. Now make sure if you go back here, level two, you got the right level. I am on level two, you can see over here. And then we click OK. So I can just start drawing now this first profile. Let me start over here and connect this up because like I said, I already did something here, okay? Now, if I go back, I can't really connect this. Have a quick look. All right, I can't connect this because obviously we're going, this will be the round bit. So what I have to start is right here. So go back here and we click and we should use this option here. And all you do is you go really along here. There will be a, see if your cursor goes black, there's a polygon there from my slab and black again. So make sure you follow those ones. Now select this. Make sure you suspend groups because I had automatically uh, groups selected. So this is all group. And we simply just move them out. Like, you know, like any slab wall tool, you can just easy adjust this going all the way out. Now in 3D, this is it. I added this one right around here. Very nice. It looks pretty good. Cool. You can zoom in, you know, it, it's great. So if you render this up, this will look pretty, pretty detailed. Detail is good if you do rendering. The more detailed, the better your render will look. 
Great, so I've got this. Let's move on to the next challenge, which is the round bit here. For this, I'm going to my section. What I like to do is you take an arc circle to make sure this is exactly, I can have it a quick try. No, see, it's not the middle. So what you have to do is, that happens quite a lot, just draw a line. Okay, so if I use my arc now, I can start exactly there. This should fit perfectly. See, there you go. And we go in the middle. Right, so that's that's our arc because we need this now to create the round part of the profile. Now you can't draw this in elevation here, unfortunately. So what I have to do is I have to copy this arc down to my floor plan. Now I want to have a look because I did actually draw and drew it down. So you have a look again in the profile. You've got to be very careful here now. Edit. Yes, my origin of the profile is at the top. So let's close it. So I'm better off do this at the top. So just move all the way to the top. And here it will connect to the bottom. Yes, so we definitely need that. Okay, let's copy this now. And we go to the floor plan. And you just paste it in here. It's not important where you paste it, just, you know, this will do, maybe move it a bit over here. Great. Next step is we do the beam tool. It's already the same selected as before. So we just base click. Okay, so we got this beam here now. And you'll see in a moment what happens. Now, you can see this is not gonna work because if you go back to the reference photo, Obviously, you can see I need it the same, looking the same way as the profile here. So what we do is next, I did another profile here and I just duplicated this and you can see I turned it around. There you go. What we have to do is, you can close this again. I can select this now and we just select number two. See, this will turn it around. Okay, and let's have a look in 3D again. See, there you go. Now it's up to you if you feel like it's too segmented, which I think it is, we will do this again. So delete and we change our magic wand settings. So you see at the moment, I've got deviation from curves, five linear segments. Let's try best match and we click again. So we use the beam tool. And have a look. Uh, it looks much better, looks much better. And of course, I will change this to number two. See, this is much more smooth, so I quite like this. Now I noticed that I did actually, when I rotated it by 90, I moved the origin into the middle see here okay so that means for this exercise because I did the arc now that way let's just drag this there all you do is save this now watch what will happen in 3d see now it moved there and that's what I'm after okay because now you got to make sure that this fit. You can see already, yeah, I can see what happens. It should be, watch this, it should be inside the arc. Can you see this? And it's going outside at the moment. See, this is quite nice. So what you do is go into here. It's very easy. I do this a lot moving around my, um, instead of moving around the construction line of the beam, many times I just move my um, profile fill. You know, it's much easier. Watch this, save. Go back in here, voila, great. Now we can't take this beam into an elevation and turn it around. So what we have to do is unfortunately, we have to convert this to a morph element. So we just do this. Now we got a morph element, great. Let's drag this over here, roughly there. And I go to my A2 elevation. And I can turn this round now in the section because it's a profile. So because it's a morph, 
you can turn this around. Make sure it's, you know, it's groups are not suspended, otherwise it will not turn everything around. Go to A1 and this should turn up just nicely here. All right, gotta make sure I am in level two. Yeah, level two is good. And all you do is you drag this over here now. Right, and we go again to the bottom bit. Ooh, see level two, gotta be very, see that's what I was looking for. Yeah, it's showing here now. I don't like this. Let's have a look. We have here level one current home story only. Okay, so that happens sometimes. It actually goes down a level. Fine by me. Just be careful when this happens. So we'll find it again. I move it all the way in here. Okay, so it's probably you see this is this is level one here because the bottom part of the morph is is in level one. It decided, Arcade decided that this belongs to level one here. Okay, no big deal, that's all good. Great. So let's have a look in 3D. This is starting to look nice already. Okay, next bit is we go to A1 and we just mirror that, or you can do it in the floor plan. It doesn't really matter, you just mirror that over. Okay, now we have to fill in this wall at the back. So how do we do this? Let me have a quick look in 3D. Okay, so you can see we got obviously holes in here and I like to fill this in with a piece. And the best way really to do this is we use a quick morph one, very easy to do. Let's go in here and we go to the morph tool, use this one here and we just go from there to there and you just go straight down there and you fill this in okay this is now a morph and just do this round a bit hard to see now unfortunately but i'm sure we get there see it will recognize when i'm exactly there beautiful now in 3d that's how it looks and again if you have seen some of my tutorials before, we need to just put some more segments into this um, morph. So let me go to the modify morph and modify segmentation. Just leave the default settings. It will just double the segments. So click OK. You see it looks much better, but I usually do it twice. So again, there and just click OK. So this looks a lot better now. Let me put a thickness in here, uh, 200, great, so if I go now down to my floor plan, it would have drawn where my section is, see, there you go, and it's very simple, you just move this now back here, there, all right, in 3D, this looks now like this, see, perfectly fixed up. I can see I need a little bit more to move in. You can do it in 3D if you like. Just select, click and you move. There you go. Cool. This looks great. So we got this now. Let me copy that now down. So we can do this in 3D. So we select this one, this one. Now I do have three 100 from each level so it's easy if i just go into this one elevate uh, increment copies one yes set home story by elevation okay you can click anywhere i can click out here move down see and just put three one home the bin all right cool so what i mean is set home story by elevation is that this home story now if you look here will be level one. Okay, otherwise we'll stay on level two. If I click on this one, see, level two. So that's why you should tick this. Next problem is you can see that doesn't look very good and we have to get rid of this. So how do we do this? Now to fix this problem, we need to create a cutting element. So what I wanna do is I wanna create an element. I can go in the middle here, this way, and also 
this way in the middle and then I can use the solid element operation. Now the easy way to do is, I show you, edit, all I need to do is you need to draw a fill and what you do is you draw this fill here and this fill you save as a new profile and we will use this as a cutting element. Now I don't save this because I already did this, see there you go and um, don't save. So this is the element I created. Now let me go back to my elevation because you have to think what you do now. Remember, let me have a quick look, um, edit. I need to see where my, all right, this is quite high up, but that's okay. The origin, that's all good. I left it actually, what I did, I show you to you, I did this, I just, did draw it, in, drew, drew it in here, made a copy, or I left it and made a copy of the profile, and I ended up with this, and you can see the distance here now is the same. There's a reason for that, I think. I'll try to remember this now, but I think there is, instead of moving it down to the origin. Great, so let me get out of this. Now what I can do is I like to draw this, but first we have to take this arc, okay, uh, yes, it's selected and we move this down to there, right in the middle, and the same here, right in the middle. Okay, great. And I like you to copy one. So let's drag a copy, go there, great. Select both of them and we copy go to our floor plan let's go up to level two where we had the other one and we paste this in here great now the next one is we just use this b now again and this time i use number three okay great hit okay and what i like you to do is just we can use a single one just draw a little bit. I don't think we need much actually. You know what? Because it's an arc, I can easily go like this. This will do. There. All right. And we just mirror a copy down. So we move and mirror copy and you go from here to here. There you go. So you got this sort of cutting element ready. Now what I want you to do is again, we need to convert this to a morph. So morph, yes. All right, now let's drag this over here. And what I do is I drag this into position. I do it in a moment also in 3D because I can't really see how far to move it in. So let me have a look in 3D. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see. I might got lucky here. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, that's good. I think I'm lucky here. It fitted exactly. Now, what you do is we go and use the solid element operation. So open this and we use the selected one, obviously, as an operator. Now you click this, click this and use target and we just subtract it, execute. Now, this one here, I like you to put on a different layer. I call mine 3D cutting elements. And voila, that looks pretty good compared to this one over here. All right, that wasn't that hard if you know how to do it, isn't it? All right, I just quickly do it with the one next. Okay, so if I just turn them off, I've got an export layer, which turns that off. It looks perfect. Great, I think we've done very well here. So let's go and move to the next reference image. The next reference, imi reference image is this one here. I wanna move this out because I always like to show you how to create this round glass bit. Let me go and just copy one up. Okay, let's have a look in 3D. So that's up there. And you can see the bottom of the arc is not cut with the cutting element 
because we moved it up and we have to just quickly do the solid element operation again with this one because they're sort of new two pieces together all right that's fine great so we got this and you can see already now the next next one is we have to move this out and we create the glass and also this round glass here all right so let me move this one ah didn't really have to do this but hey look never mind it's it's a tutorial that's all good because this moves out here didn't really have to cut this but that's cool okay so that's fairly simple but to add this just use the morph again there we go all right cool so you see we have now created the next detail up here now you can see also we got different materials let me change the material so close this one here if you click on a morph with the left you can go to this option here and you can change just the clicked face or you can change everything so for now the first thing is i like to do let me change everything and i want to change it to the blade okay but now if i go in here because i really want to have in here a different surface so have a quick look what's it first i've got here balcony two so what you have to do is you click here click again and go there and only the clicked face now you go to balcony two and okay see so it's got this one and let's do this again with this piece so go there this surface balcony two okay so now they got the same material of course have a look on the reference photo you can clearly see this is the same material here but inside they got some um, aluminium panels okay great let's go back next step is oh yes right so we got to do the handrail and we have to do this half round window for this i'm going into my elevation and i do the windows first the window i do with the curtain wall very simple make sure you use the same um, settings material wise as you have for your window frames so all this should be the same after setting all that what you can do is you go to this option here yep that's good and we can click in here with a space bar and if it doesn't do it so what we need then to do is draw the exact half of this arc and close it off with a line and then we can use the space and click because now if i go to the curtain wall with this option here you should be able to yeah see you can ask hit space bar and it will draw it but as you can see i have to change to magic one go and um, 72 just space click and have a try and see what happens i think this looks pretty good actually it's not too bad and it's nice and round yeah i like it okay so obviously we have to move this window again remember it's always when i draw it on the elevation it always goes where the elevation line is all right let's move this up and we go there and let's move it in here yeah that's better now that's the way you do this half round window now obviously again it's very easy we just make sure we move them up and copy them great in 3d there you go see that didn't take too long they look great they will render perfectly now next week is go back here reference photo as we can see let's zoom out yeah this is probably a better one I want to do the handrail top and the glass so this one here we use again the morph tool to make it sure to make sure it is exact again use the arc and i show you what you can do let's copy this one so let's drag this one up of course you have a look if i move this here I can then add this again perfectly there all right and what 
what it does if I now drag up the you can see already the shape it will get me here. Now let's duplicate this, drag a copy. Now it's 10 and because I copied it that way, this is not exactly 10 here. So to make this 10, just use the line roughly this way, do 10. There we go. Select this one and we rotate from here and you just go up here and you select you know just roughly there and you move it there okay so this is now the same distance for the top of the handrail as you got pretty much the shape of this little handrail piece ready to go we just use the morph tool because you will see it is much easier to do it that way and you can easily move it into place in 3d now this is in place make sure you extend it of course extrude it make sure the handrail fits and the glass is the same thickness and then you're ready with this piece too and we can move on to the next one okay i think this looks pretty cool now so we got already our second bit we uh, we got this extended out we have the glass handrail as we here so we can move to the next bit and this bit is a bit more challenging. We go back here and A1, I like to connect this now. What I might do is, this will help a little bit. It's just easier to see what I'm doing now. So the connections I want to do is, you can see that the level of the buildings are obviously halfway up. So what we do is to connect this now, I will connect from here to there, to there. And for this, I use a spline first. So I'll take a spline and we connect this and I want to go from the middle, okay? Because, go back here. Okay, I don't have this in the middle now. Yeah, no, that's cool. So it doesn't have to be in the middle. So we can go from here. But you know what? I really like this in the middle. Because I have to go to the middle here. Let, let, let me copy another one. Not a problem. So we go here and duplicate. It's number six. That's fine. Edit. And this one I do like to have in the middle. Let me just save this. All right, cool. Let's get back to my spline because I like to draw the spline in the middle. Click and click again. So that's my spline. You see it's just like a line at the moment, but you can, if you use this tool, you can extend the spline. And what you do is you use this one here. See, and you go that way. Now again, we just roughly designing this as from the image. So let me go five meters, five. And I do the same with this one here at the top, five. Okay, so you can see that the curve is the same now as this and it meets in the middle. Yeah, I think that's nice. Let's do it that way. Let me mirror a copy. Excellent. And we take this and we copy and go to our floor plan. I did this in floor two the most of them. Yeah, let's do the same here. Okay, and you use line to close this off. Because the way the way we need to do the shape, let me go back to explain it. If you zoom in and you're careful, it is not that easy because what happens is actually it is actually not straight continue and you know going there because you can see this actually maybe a bit further down here yes it actually moves out that way so i think this glass facade is further out than this glass facade if it's the same level much easier but because it's moving out it gives us a bit of a challenge great so what i did 
again I estimated the thing I estimated that roughly so what I did with the measure tool have a quick look click I think I went one meter I can't remember now 1550 interesting it's exactly half of the 3 100 level I have look again it's estimated so anyway so the facade goes out so what how to do this in ArchiCAD you got to use the shell tool okay shell tool just you know very simple you just add the thickness and we you know put in here i think let me have a quick look what i have i think i've got concrete one so I just do the same i have here what do i have i got concrete four all right so let's do the same we go shell concrete four can do it after but it's might as well do it now shell that's good and you leave everything else for now the same so click ok now we use the magic mod tool again before i use the magic mod tool i need to actually make a copy or well, i like to make a copy it's just easier for me and we need to now change from from this to this and now you can just do again magic mod tool space click uh, extrusion length yeah 200 that's the thickness of the wall quite happy with that so in 3d this is looking like this now okay not very high but that's cool we can change this in our elevation all right so I'll take this and let me extend this shell now use this tool here and it's for now actually you know what I'm quite happy to move this down so it matches this here yeah that's better and we match them in the middle yeah of course the same is 3 100 I cool. well, as you can see I have to move this to match this one okay so what we do is then we have to create uh, a um, the shell you, you can if you right click here you can say define shell contour and that's what I want to do for now to do this the contour I doubt it will pick up the exact contour because I don't have a line in here so let me then for now take this go zoom in a bit this one this one let me drag this down about here right into the picture all right okay now we select this oh now i have to draw a line see it needs to have a closed um shape to be able to cut this okay so i click here now right click and i say uh, say define shield contour and now you should be able to click there and it looks like it didn't work so what you can do is i'll make a copy to the right of the shape and fill it up with the fill and then let's try to use the fill to create the shape of the shell and we move it all the way to the top bring to front and we try again so we go define shell contour let's see if it works this time ah that's it all right now in 3d this looks pretty cool see so it's going out by roughly one and a half meters cool so this is nice we have this piece of shell now so we drag up the shell and let's move it into level two all right oh i'll be very careful here i have to make sure I drag the whole shell, not just the shape of the shell I use to cut out. No, it's fine. I mean, you can adjust the slab obviously, you know, to this, but for this tutorial, that's fine. This will work just right. Now, how can we now do the profile along here? Because you can't use a beam and you can't use a wall. So what we do is the following. We go back to our profile and I like to go to this one here. Okay, you edit 
and you do nothing for now, but I want to save it as a handrail. Just click here, save. All right, let's get out of here again. Great, we select this, hit F5. Oh, that was the wrong button. Let's do that again. Uh, F5, All right, cool. So what you do is we go to the railing and I'd like you to just, I mean, if you have an empty one, use an empty one, but I use this one as only one piece. So we open the railing and now we can use um, rails and we just, yeah, it's a handrail, but you know what? Let's get rid of this rails. I want to add a rail and just click down there. And here we can now say we use the profile. Right, so we use number six. I don't want fixing. Great, and you see absolute make this zero. And there's some more settings, but let me just do this for now and you'll see what happened. Let's move it on to handrails. Okay, so if I go now and draw this handrail here, zoom in a bit, let me click here, click. Just click a couple. I just want to show you what happens. And click again, and click again the same spot. Okay, two things happens. I used the wrong profile, and you can see we got problems here. All right, great. Profile is fixed easy. Let's do this first. So I'm going to profile rail. I should have used this one. Hey, fair enough. And actually we should overwrite while we're here and we put in the lights again. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, so I'm clicking here. Just a couple. I tried space clicking, it doesn't work unfortunately. Okay, so this is looking better, but as you can see, we got problem here. And this is because, let me select this you have to change the endings of the handrail. So we go here, connections and endings. It's a default setting in here, I don't know why. Very annoying, it should be on zero, but you see 200 here? So you gotta put that on zero. And we actually use rails, okay. I did on the top rail, so the main thing is you use the rail zero. Um, and same one again, we go to rail, just go through this is good go back here we go rail because i just noticed there's another one here another one there yes just make it to just do it zero for now because i think we need it all on zero okay beautiful okay you can see now so what you do is you click along here all the way down here to have the same settings on a PC, I use Alt click. So I should get the exact same settings again. So let me do this now. Okay, so you can see I did a small mistake. That's why I kept zooming in. It can happen that I have the wrong polygon point when clicking, I'll show you. This can happen easy. Okay, but it's also easy fixed because what you do is now you just select this and you move this polygon. Let me turn around and we move this polygon back. Okay, a bit higher up. Yeah, this one here, you have to move back. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let me have a look in here in the elevation. Oh yeah, I like it. And 3D. How good is that? You know, so it's going out, it's going all the way down here. And this will render perfectly. This, this is good, very nice. Now, again, you can, the top ones, you can leave them as handrail. You can change them to morph, that's fine. Or you can also do another um, profile and do another handrail down here. So that's up to you. For, for me, it's easy. I just now 
really pretty much um, change this to a morph. And then you make sure you mirror a copy. And when you mirror the copy, you will see in 3D, it needs to still be rotated. Of course, you move it into place, but have a look in 3D and you can see, yes, we need to rotate this piece. So just rotate this one and then you move it back into place and we have a look in 3D. This looks pretty cool now. Very nice, actually, very nice. Right, let's go back to our reference photo because this is a tiny bit different here because I could not figure out exactly how to get this smooth. Now I put out the challenge now there. I'm very happy if you come up with the solution in ARCHICAD, not in Rhino, not in Grasshoppers. I like you to see if you can produce this better in ARCHICAD. It might be possible with the shell tool, but I run out of time. I tried quite a lot, but I could not find a solution. So I put it out there. Give me some ideas and it would be great if we could actually do this in ARCHICAD. Now, going back here, I need to now obviously just add the windows. Again, this is a little bit different to before because the window, you can see the window will, you know, it will bend this way a little bit. So that's different to this one here. So it's not that easy to just do it exactly the same way as we did this here. So how do we do this? I, I'll show you. Let me go back to my section. Now I will use arc circle, but an ellipse. Ellipse in the middle, ellipse, and we just click here and we sort of move this out. I just do this by eye now, roughly there. I take this and now I like to connect this with this up to there. And the same at the bottom. Yeah, that fits perfectly. Next bit is you need to cut a hole in the shell. We already got this special shell shape, but we need to cut a hole into the shell now. Now again, we I'm not sure if it will work here, so we might have to take this and let me copy that down. Oh no, up. I like to go up and let's drag and let's drag it by a number. Let's drag it up by uh, about 15. Okay, so you go back here and you say Y, 15000 plus. All right, so great. I made a copy for now, that's cool. And we draw a line from there to there. And let's try if we can cut this hole. So what you do is again, you select the shell, right click. And because we, we already got the shape of the shell, I like now to create a hole. You see, you can't do another shape, but I can create a hole. So I click this. Let's have a look in 3D. Nice, I like it. Right, let's get back here. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now, how do we do this glass? All right, very similar. Let me get back to here. And because I've got this here now, I can use the same um, curtain wall, space click again. So we got this, but obviously it's straight. It doesn't bend. So how do we bend this? All right, so we go and move in here. Let me make a copy of this. Let me go into 3D. I should be able to select the hole. Yeah, all right, cool. So that's deleted, perfect. Next, I have to take that window I just did before. Let's go back to the floor plan and deselect everything and we move out and we select only those two items f5 and now i move this one towards this um shell there we go and make sure it's fitting straight yes it does great now what we have to do is we have to make this glass thicker in width so open um the curtain wall the important is it just has to go over in length 
over the shell piece. Okay, so what we do is now you can see I need to move it slightly. Make sure you move it exactly along the axe here. So we go a little bit more that way. If I zoom now up, sort of up, yeah, there you go. So that's covering everything. So what we do is now we go and do another solid element operation. So we take the solid element operation here. And first I want the target, which is this one here. And we use the shell as operator. And instead of subtraction, you have to use intersection. So if I execute now, you see what happens is move up. See, it bends exactly the glass. This is exactly what I need. I actually just noticed there's a piece of glass missing on the left. So the glass needs to extend a little bit further. Okay, so what you have to do is, that's fine. Let's go in here and let's do this two meters. See, it's extending a bit more and then make sure we maybe also do the uh, the panels a little bit more, it's not a problem. Let's just put a two in. Let's start, I think I have to do this side first, otherwise it won't work. And the, this boundary frame, you just have to ex extend this quickly, okay? And then we move it. So you gotta be careful. See, it's wider now. So you see where the, the dots are, so the polygons, I think that's where the glass starts. So make sure that this is moving inside the shell piece. So that's all it is. So let's do it just quickly and I do the element operation again. Okay, you see now? Yes, we do have all the glass, so that's great. We can move it down this time and we should have no problem there. Yeah, see, that's perfect. So it's good to see sometimes that you're doing stuff, even if you follow some of my tutorial, and it can happen that you maybe miss a little statement and think, oh look, Carsten did exactly this and it's not gonna work. So that can happen. So I like to show little things like this. I hope this will help you too in the future about um, modeling stuff up in ArchiCAD. Now, going down here, you can see it fits perfectly in here. And the next steps are very easy. So I select what I need to go down. And in this case, for just straight down, I need all of them. So let me select this one and gotta make sure I also select the glass. All right, great. So let me um, just move one down. So I drag a copy down, down uh, 3100. So this obviously fits nicely, but how do I get this over there? Because I only need this one and the glass. So. Let me go to the A1, it's easier this way. All right, so I take the glass and the shell and I rotate a copy. And let's see how this looks for now. Yeah, you can see it's not quite ready yet. So as you can see, I do also have from the floor plan, I have to mirror it. So let's go to the floor plan. Yeah, not bad, but you can see I have to move it up a little bit. Okay, look at this. Perfect. And this is how it looks when you finish sort of the building. I copied some stories up and it starts looking really good actually. There you go, I love it. And then as you saw, I did the direct link to Twinmotion. And you can see in Twinmotion obviously added some really nice um, furniture texture and all that. And it makes it looks pretty cool. So I think it's, um, it, it's great detail in there, as you can see now. And yeah, if you haven't used Twinmotion and haven't given it a go yet, just download the trial version and do some small tutorials and see how far you get. It's a great software and I can totally recommend it. Okay, so let's get back to our ArchiCAD tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit a longer one, but I'm happy to be back in 2021 and there is a lot more to come. Okay, I hope to see you next time and bye for now.